welcome back to another video today as you guys can see <laughs> i'm going to be showing you guys how to crochet the trendiest cardigan on the internet at the moment which is the jw anderson cardigan that harry styles made very trendy so that's what i'm going to be showing you guys in today's video i'm so excited my smile is like from ear to ear because it's so pretty so amazing and colorful and i cannot say anything bad about it it's amazing so i hope you guys enjoy today's video if you end up making this cardigan make sure to share with me on my social media instagram and facebook everything is brunette quality so it's super easy for you guys to find me and also make sure to give this video a massive thumbs up if you guys already like it and also subscribe here to the channel so you can watch more videos like this one so enjoy today's video guys and let's begin so this is everything that we are going to be using for today's video so i have right here a measuring tape a tapestry needle a six millimeters hook a small pair of scissors and also I'm going to be using here some black buttons. This one I bought on Amazon. I'm going to be linking that in the description below as well as all of the other items right here if you guys are interested in buying any of these. These buttons right here, they are quite large. So they are three centimeters as you can see and the original cardigan, the buttons are quite large. So I decided to buy these ones. They are wood and they are really nice buttons. And for my yarns, I'm going to be using all of these right here. So I have here the yellow, the black, the green. It's kind of like a dark green. And then I have here a lighter blue and then the red and lastly the orange. So it's six colors. You guys can decide in any color that you want. I am trying to create as close as possible to the original cardigan. All of these yarns right here, they are this one. So from Hayfield Bonus DK extra value they are 100 grams i'm going to be leaving all the information down in the description below as well for you guys and then the shades and everything and this one is 100 percent acrylic if i'm not mistaken yeah 100 percent acrylic and for my rectangles i'm doing rectangles because i think that's more closer to what the cardigan um looks like because i don't think it's square because they are kind of like longer than squares but if you guys want you can do squares so these are the two different rectangles that we are going to be doing so one is going to be a plain color so in one color and the other one is going to be black and red you guys can decide into any other pattern um, a mosaic pattern into crochet i decided to do this one but you guys can do as close as possible to the original cardigan as well but I'm going to be doing this one. So first I'm going to be showing you guys how I've created the one color one. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to make in yellow. So we are going to be starting with the base that I always show you guys. So it's kind of like a stretcher here on the bottom, exactly as it is on the top. But if you guys want to start with the chain right at the beginning, what you guys can do is create a chain of 12 and then chain an extra three for the side and then continue on top here of the chain so first we are going to be creating a slip knot once you have created the slip knot we are going to be chaining three so one two and three now what we are going to be doing is wrapping the yarn around the hook then you're going to go into the very first stitch go through that stitch you're going to be grabbing the yarn now you're going to be having three loops here on the hook you're gonna go through the very first loop and you're gonna keep that one in the hook right here this one that we leave right on the bottom is basically the base of our rectangle we are going to be working with half double crochets so you're just gonna yarn over and pull through all of the loops and this one right here is basically that chain that we left here as the base so what you're going to be doing is wrapping the yarn around the hook you're gonna go through that stitch right here that very first one grabbing the yarn and then from here we are going to be continuing the same as we did into the second one right here so you're going to be going through that stitch leaving that on the hook and then you're going to be going through all the loops and this is basically how i create 
my base without having the chain right at the beginning so it's nice and stretchy. So what I'm going to be doing now is create 13 half double crochets. Remember to count the very first chain at the beginning, the chain two at the beginning as one as well. So I'm here into my last one, so number 13. Once you have this done, we are gonna go up two chains. So you're going to be chaining two, you're going to be turning your project, you are going to wrap the yarn around the hook, you're going to be skipping this very first stitch into the second one is where we are going to be creating the first half double crochet. So right here, to create that knitted effect, kind of like this, so it's kind of like a wavy effect, as you can see. So to create that effect, you're not gonna go through the entire stitch, as you can see, grabbing both loops. What we are going to be doing is going through the back loop only. So we have the front and the back loop. So you're just gonna go through the back loop, as you can see. You're going to grab the yarn. Now you're going to be having the same as we had into the previous row. And you're going to basically yarn over, pull through all the loops together. So now we're gonna go again into the next stitch, grabbing only the back loop and creating a half double crochet. So now you guys can create half double crochets all the way down. And then I'll meet you guys right at the end so I can show you guys where you're going to be placing the very last half double crochet. When you get at the end of the row, you will see that you have this right here, in which is basically the chain two that we basically left into the previous row. So what you're going to be doing is creating one half double crochet into the very last stitch. There is kind of like a little angled stitch right here, so you're going to make sure that you get that stitch, so your work is going to be straight on both sides right here. If you want to make sure that you've created the correct amount of half double crochets, so you're going to be having 13 into the first one, and then 13 into the next row. So now we are going to be repeating the same steps as I showed you guys into the second row right here until we have 12 rows. So it's basically the same steps all the way up to the very top right here. So that's 12 rows in total. So just to show you guys again how to do it, so you're going to be chaining two, turning your project, you're going to be skipping, this very first stitch right here in which is from the chain you're gonna go into the second one getting only the back loop and then you're going to be starting with your half double crochets and then from here you're gonna go all the way down to the very last stitch make sure that you get the very last stitch and then from here we are going to be creating 12 rows in total. So when I have my 12 rows, I'll come back and then I'll show you guys what to do next. Once you have created the 12 rows right here, you guys will be cutting the yarn and you can fasten off. So cutting the yarn right here and then you guys can go ahead and chain one and pull the yarn to fasten off. So this is basically how we are going to be creating the one collar rectangles. <laughs> I'm about to say squares because I'm so used to create squares and not rectangles. If you guys want to know the measurements for these, because I want to share with you guys everything that I'm doing, all the measurements and everything, if you guys want to do it in a different size, because then you will need to know the sizing here of the rectangle that I'm doing. So the sizing here for my rectangles are 14 centimeters. So it's 14 by 10 in inches. So that's in inches. I'm not gonna read it for you guys because I'm really bad in inches. And that's like this. So for this one, I'm not gonna show you guys in black and red because you guys will not be able to see um, the black one. Like on the camera, it's gonna be very hard for you guys to see that. So what I'm going to be doing instead is creating in yellow and orange so you guys can see exactly what i'm doing it's gonna be quite helpful for you guys so you're going to be starting with the base in which is the black so i'm going to be using here the orange so first we are going to be creating a slip knot and we are going to be creating here a chain of 12. 
So once you've done that, you're going to be chaining an extra three and then holding this one, the very last one, the number 12 chain in place, chain three, and then into that stitch, we are going to be creating a half double crochet. So the pattern that we are going to be doing for this very first row will be black, 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 red. So now for us to transition into the yellow one in which is going to be the red. So you're going to be creating here the first part of the half double crochet. You're gonna leave it like this. You're gonna grab the next color in which is basically the red one, but I'm using here the yellow. You're going to kind of like grab a little bit of the yarn and then you're going to be folding the end to one side. Just make sure that you guys leave a little bit because then you guys can weave in at the back basically of the project. And now once you have that, you're going to basically go through with the yellow through all of these loops right here, basically kind of creating the half double crochet, but then changing into the next color. So now what you're going to be doing is grabbing the end of the yellow, which is the red, and then this one and leave it at the back, grabbing the yellow one in which is going to be the one that we are going to be working on now. So grabbing here the yellow, you're gonna go into the next stitch, go through that, and then grabbing the yarn. So now we have to change into basically the orange again. So orange, 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 yellow. Then again, we have to repeat the same from the beginning. So black, 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 red. So you're going to be leaving the yellow. So now for you guys not to twist them, you're going to grab the orange one from the back, you'll see. Like it's kind of like that. If I grab it like here, what's gonna happen is going to start to twist both yarns. So instead, because this one is on our right side, you're going to be grabbing that, twisting it like this. You can see? It's like this at the moment. So the orange on top and then the yellow on the bottom. You wanna put the orange to basically the top of the yellow so here is right on top and then you're gonna grab it from the bottom and then right here you're gonna go through the loops so now you're going to be repeating the same so you're going to be leaving them right here you're going to be creating now three half double crochets making sure that this yarn right here which is the yellow it's in between the stitches see that true <laughs> so two and then the third one in which is basically the one that we changed the color you're not gonna complete the half double crochet then this one I think we can leave this one already the end right here we can just weave in later so now we're going to be transitioning into the yellow one again so we don't have to twist it because it's already on top so now we are going to be grabbing the yellow through the loops and then we are going to be creating the one yellow that we have to make but we are not going to be completing here the half double crochets we are going to be grabbing the orange so we can create the three orange so you're going to twist it and you're going to be creating the three orange right here the three half double crochets with the orange so one two and three so now you're going to be changing into the yellow and then you're going to be basically doing the yellow one and then changing into the orange. So the last one that we have to do is the orange, but then you have to see which one is going to be the next one. Let me just show you guys what I'm looking at at the moment. As you can see, <laughs> maybe that's going to help a little bit. So we are doing right here black 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 red as i have 13 right here it doesn't really match four four and four what you guys can do is just repeat the last one again so that's what i did right here then you will see which one comes on top so it's basically the red one so it's going to be the yellow 
So what you're going to be doing, it's grabbing the yellow through these loops right here. Ta-da! Like this. So now you're going to be following the diagram. So red, red, black, red. So we are going to be starting with the yellow, which is our red. So chain two, so we go up, you're going to be turning the project. You want to make sure that the orange working yarn is also at the back, so we can move into where we want to basically change into the orange. And then you're going to be skipping the first one, following the same steps as before. So we have to do two reds, so it's two yellows right here. And then one black and one red. So we're going to be doing one orange and then change into the yellow one. So, so yellow, yellow, orange, yellow. And then we're going to be doing again, repeating the same pattern, yellow, yellow, orange, yellow. Make sure that you always change. So it's going to be yellow, yellow, orange, yellow. So just follow all the steps until the end. We are also grabbing only the back loop on the stitches, as you can see, so it creates the same effect as before. Just gonna finish right here with my yellow and then you have to see in which color comes next so it's the black one so it's the orange so you're going to basically twist it and transition into the orange one so you're gonna go up so it's black red black and black when this happens when you have a black and a red one what you're going to what are you going to be doing it's basically chaining one when you're going to basically chain the second one, you're going to come here with the yellow. You're going to be chaining here with the yellow right on top because then we start with the orange and then go into the yellow. <laughs> I was going to say red. And then it's black, red, black and black. So now we are going to be creating right here our yellow one. So we're skipping the first one into the second, creating the yellow. Now we have to do two orange so two blacks so one and two yeah so that's basically our pattern so orange yellow orange orange and then we have to start again orange yellow orange orange so we're going to be doing another one in which is the orange so now we're going to transition into the yellow one, so creating one yellow, moving into the orange, so we're going to be creating the same pattern, so just follow all the steps until the end. So now you guys have to see which one is the next one, so the next one is basically the same one as the second row, as you can see, so red, red, black and red, so you're going to be moving into the top row with the yellow in this case then you're going to be chaining two turning the project making sure that the orange one is at the back and then you're going to go into the second stitch not the first one the second grabbing the back loop and you're going to be creating that one so it's red red black and red so you're going to be changing into the orange and then changing it back into the yellow. So this is our pattern, as you can see. So now we are just going to be following the same pattern. Make sure that you also grab the very last stitch. You wanna make sure that you have 13 into all the rows. So once we have four rows, that means that we have finished our little pattern. So what we are going to be doing is going back into the very first one and repeat all again. So it's black, black, black and red. So we change into the orange, which is our black. And then you're going to be following the same pattern all the way down 
I'm just going to be going through this one in which is basically our last row from the right at the beginning because now I'm just going to be explaining to you guys how many rows I'm going to be doing. So to make this mosaic rectangle exactly the same size as the one colored ones, I had to increase one row for the mosaic because I think it's quite tight to the stitches so they are a little bit smaller than the normal ones so instead of doing 12 rows I've done 13 for this one as you can see I've done all that and you're going to be basically repeating until you have the 13 rows that you have to do so this is a little swatch that I showed you guys but of course you guys will be continuing and continuing until you have the 13 rows here for this one completed once you have the 13 rows completed what you're going to be doing is exactly as i did it right here so when you are basically into the very last row you're going to be completing here the half double crochet with the same color as you finished once you've done that you can chain one and then you guys will be cutting this yarn to fasten off and also the other one and then now you guys can just basically fasten off and what I like to do is to basically create a little knot here right at the end just to make this very nice and secured and it's not gonna unravel so I do have all of my squares completed now so what I'm going to be doing is bringing them right here and let you guys know how many I did for each color so I have all of my rectangles right here completed for the orange the green the black and the red right here I have 13 rectangles on each of these colors for the red and black I have 12 and for the yellow one I have 14 I had to kind of like divide them how I wanted the colors to kind of like be spreaded so this is something that you guys can decide as well also I have here in total 78 rectangles so now for the cuffs and for the bottom of the cardigan which is basically like the bottom finish we are going to be doing in red this kind of like hemming right here i'm not sure how to call this so for this part i'm going to be doing in red as it's basically the same as the original but you guys can choose any other as well so we are going to be starting with a slip knot and we are going to be chaining a chain of nine once you have done your chain of nine we are going to be chaining three like this and then into that stitch so you can count one two three into the fourth stitch here on the chain we are going to be creating our first half double crochet and then we are gonna go down the chain here with half double crochets so in total for the base right here we are going to be having 10 half double crochets including the chain right at the beginning and to go up the rows right here is basically the same as I showed you guys previously. So you're going to chain two, turn project, and then you're going to be skipping the first one into the second right here, grabbing the back loop only, you're going to be creating the half double crochets. And then you're gonna go all the way down, creating half double crochets. And then when you get right at the end, you wanna make sure that you get the very, very last stitch as well. And this is basically how I've created this pieces right here. Skipping the very first one into the second, a half double crochet, grabbing the back loop only and then going back and forth and going up until you have the sizing that you need. At the moment right here I have 23 for the cuffs and 84 for the bottom of the cardigan so 23 rows and 84 rows for this one right here this one is quite long as you can see i am going to be measuring this for you guys as well if you guys are using a different yarn weight so it's seven centimeters by 28 and a half and then for these longer one, it's basically the same. So seven centimeters 
by without stretching okay I'm not stretching this one by 110 and a half centimeters so now I'm going to be taking you guys to my other table so we can start to attach everything together and just gather all of the squares and you can see the layout that I'm going to be doing as well I'm back and now you guys can see my face because usually you guys can only see my hands so I'm basically following this top right here that I really love wearing especially now that it's a little bit kind of like chilly it's quite on the loose fitting as you guys can see so this top right here is from shoulder to length is 60 centimeters and from the side to the other side it's around 56 centimeters and for the sleeves right here for this top i'm doing the same as well so that's 49 centimeters for the sleeves here that goes around your arms i'm doing 46 centimeters because it's not going to be exactly like this one because this one is quite quite tight on the, it's not very tight it does it's a little bit loose this one but i want it to be a little bit more just like the original as well so now we have to get all of the rectangles that we've created all of the 78 that we've created and we are going to be basically placing them on top of the top that you're following or basically you guys can follow what i'm going to be showing you guys in a minute but we just want to make sure that we don't have any rectangles kind of the same color together we want to make sure that we spread them very nicely around so you get that kind of like a uh, patchwork kind of feeling i think that's how it's called patchwork puff work i don't know you get you get what i mean right kind of that colorful look that the actual cardigan has So this is here, this is my front, so here I'm going to still do the blue edging here in the front so we can add the buttons, but for now this is what I have for the front and then I'm going to be doing exactly the same for the back, but then I'm going to be joining them here together. So how we're going to be sewing is sewing both of these lines together, so on both sides and then going across these three lines right here but we're not gonna be doing them together as this is the front the back then you're going to be sewing them all together so yeah let's start with the sewing so here is basically the shoulder of the cardigan as i showed you guys in the previous clip so what i'm going to be doing first is basically sew just sew them like this into little groups and then after that i'm going to be sewing right here in the middle and also you guys can choose if you guys want to have all of the rectangles facing one direction so i have here basically the bottom of the rectangle so where we've created the very first row so all of them are basically going into that direction and also you guys can place all of the threads to one side you can see it's facing that way that way so that way so you can see they are all kind of like into the same direction so this one is twisted so you're just gonna turn to the other side so basically they follow the same pattern right here so it connects all the rows together so i did thread my tapestry needle right here i'm going to be sewing with a single yarn choosing the very first stitch from this side and then choose the other one so any of the very very first stitches right here and right here at the end we are going to create a knot to secure this in place and then from here we are going to be starting to sew the rectangles together so this row right here with this one so you're basically just going to be sewing the two together and also you want to make sure that you match the rows as well so what i'm going to be doing is just sewing these two together 
and then I'll meet you guys right at the end so I can show you guys how to fasten off and weave in. When you get here towards the end, you're gonna choose a very last stitch from one side and then another one from the other side. You're going to be sewing them together and then you're gonna go into those stitches one more time. You're going to be creating a loop and then you're gonna go through that loop to fasten off here right at the end of the sewing. And then you can go ahead and just go through a few stitches like this. And you can basically just fasten off into that stitch as well. You can go once and twice through that stitch and then the last one you leave a loop, go through the loop and you can fasten off. So that's how I usually do this. So what I'm going to be doing guys is sew all of the other ones together. So I'm going to be sewing this one and then these three here together. And then I'm going to be sewing it right here and then I'll show you guys how that looks like as well. So as you can see I have finished the sewing in between the rectangles right here. So what I'm going to be doing now is joining them together. So we have right side facing the right side. And then we are going to be creating a sewing going across right here. So what I'm going to be doing now is following the same steps into all of the other ones. So what I'm going to be doing now is sewing them here in the middle and then these ones right here. And then after that, I'm going to be sewing them here. And then there is going to be the front of the cardigan, one of the sides. And then I'll do the same on this side right here. I did attach them <laughs> wrong right here, as you can see. I was supposed to add the red one on this side. So what I'm going to be doing is having this one right here for the back and then I'll do another one here for the front. So I'm going to be joining all of them together and then I'll be back with you guys in a second. the two panels here for the front ready we have to now do the back panel in which is basically exactly like this one but with a sewing in the middle okay so it's like a larger square it's not like divided into two pieces and before you actually do that you want to make sure that you add the squares let's say you add the squares here on the side so you're going to create a like a larger square but you want to make sure that the squares they don't match here on the sides because that's not going to look nice so you want to make sure that it's a different color kind of like this so you're going to be adding until you have what six rows like this and then four like that so i've created basically half already so this one right here as you can see they don't match and i try to kind of like spread all the colors around and as you can see i have started the other part so i just have now here six to complete so i can finish the back panel and then when i have this finished i'm just going to create a sewing right in the middle connecting these two parts together so it creates the back of the cardigan you guys will see what i mean in a minute i'm kind of like just connecting and sewing them together so i can show you guys all of the panels um, you guys can always pause in the video so you guys can see the sequence here that I'm following for the colors if you guys want to do exactly as I did or you can get creative and you can just spread the colors around and do however you guys prefer. The same with this side, you want to make sure that you do basically what you can do is move this one around. So this is basically my left. 
left side of the front and this one it's going to be the right side and here is the side of my cardigan so you want to make sure that when you add it nothing matches as you can see so it's kind of like a massive rectangle now so you can see that there is no colors matching right here and also right here so now i'm just gonna plan this part here with you guys there is no a lot of yellows right here on the top maybe i can move this one down yeah i think i'm gonna move this one down and then maybe add like a like a yellow here on the top So this one right here is basically the entire main part of the cardigan. We're still gonna add the sleeves right here somewhere in which I still have to see where it's gonna go. Uh, remember that here is the, the top of my cardigan, okay? That's the bottom. Just so you guys know that I'm working towards yourselves and not me, so you guys can see better. I'm just turning here on the reverse as you guys can see and what I like to do so nothing moves kind of out of the way is to pin the squares here together so they're not gonna move and I'm not gonna get confused when sewing them so I just like to pin them here together can see it's not gonna move anywhere so I'm gonna go now and then I'll be back in a second so now I have my back piece all sewed together as you can see then i have my two front pieces here as you can see then let me check how i'm gonna do this one so i think it's like this but i'll double check because i took a picture because it's quite confusing guys you have to make sure that you kind of like take a picture so you can come back to how you laid everything like all the the colors and everything I'm going to be pinning these two here now together so they're not gonna be moving around and I don't have to kind of like uh, keep on like looking at the picture because otherwise we get very lost with these and I'm also going to be putting a pin right here I think you guys can see that just so I know that this one is basically the top of my cardigan gonna put two pins here just to make sure that they're not gonna move so this is basically now our cardigan we are going to be doing now the sleeves so I'm just going to show you guys how that looks so you're gonna be folding it like this and like that and then the sleeves we are going to be sewing it right here also now you have to check if you're not gonna be placing any color that is exactly the same here right at the beginning of the sleeves so how i decided to do that was i'm gonna show you guys so i have here my left side this is the right side if you guys are wondering i'm going to be basically deciding how i'm going to be doing the sleeves now so for the sleeves i'm going to be doing five this way as you can see so this is going to be going around the arms and i'm gonna go down three rows so now is the time that you guys can choose how you want it and what you're going to be doing is removing the pin on one side but make sure that you remember that this one is the top and here is the one that goes connected with this side so you can put like two pins here and there just to make sure that you don't get lost what you're going to be doing is you're gonna try to move the sleeves that way now 
so we get some space. I'm gonna move that way so I can move this one. So I'm gonna get this side that I just removed and I'm gonna place it right here, as you can see. Shoulder with shoulder. And then the side is right here and then the side is right here. Right here, so we have the shoulders right here, the top of the shoulders. Right here is where we are going to be sewing the sleeves. So I'm going to get now my sleeves, as you can see. As you can see, I have the middle of my sleeves right in the middle right here of the shoulder, right on top of the shoulder. As you can see, this one is right in the middle. And then I just place the other two and then I go down like this. Now I'm just gonna move my sleeves this way. So I'm just gonna be pinning now here the sides again, just so I don't lose any of what I did so far. So I'm going to be leaving this one right here and I'm going to be starting to sew here my sleeves. So what I'm going to be doing now, guys, it's do another one, another sleeves. You guys can do exactly the same colors or you guys can mix and match, but you have to make sure that no colors matches on the other side. So you're gonna have to do exactly the same as I did into the right side of the cardigan. So now I'm going to be laying this one flat exactly as I did before and try to play around with the top right here. I'm going to time lapse that for you guys so you guys can see what I'm doing. sleeves and then I'll be back with you guys to show you how I'm going to be sewing all the parts together and then we are going to be doing the extra parts for the cardigan. So I have finished my sleeves as you guys can see and also I've created one of them already so this is basically what we are going to be doing now. So I just put a little label right here so I know that this one is the one on the right and this one is the one on the left. And for the sleeves right here I've added the cuffs as you guys can see right here. And also I've closed here, I've kind of created like a little tube so we can actually insert it like a sleeves. So the first thing that we are going to be doing before we start the sleeves is of course to have the cuffs ready so i have my one right here what we are going to be doing now is basically clean all of the threads around here you guys can weave in if you guys prefer what i decided to do was just kind of like creating knots with these ones here kind of like in the middle of the sleeves so i create like triple knots right here and then i just cut the ends off so that's what I'm going to be doing with these ones if you have any threads on this side you want to make sure that you do move them to basically the reverse so you can actually weave in and like make knots with them and everything so you don't want to have anything any thread on the right side of the sleeves if you have like one like this even like on the corners what you're going to be doing is you're going to weave in and fasten off into the same color that this thread is. So I'm going to be weaving in right here, just going through with my tapestry needle into a couple of stitches right here. And then I'm just gonna go through twice. And then on the second one, I'm going to be making a loop. I'm gonna go through that loop and I'm basically going to fasten off, very simple as I always do with my projects. So once you have the sleeves completed, what we are going to be doing is making sure that the sleeves is on the right side. So the right side is facing you. You're going to be opening on the right side. You're going to be folding one side and then the other right here. And we are going to be basically doing the same sewing as we did for the squares. We are going to be doing to close here the sleeves. So that's what I'm going to be doing now before we continue. So you guys can go ahead and do that as well. We are going to 
be working now here on the bottom of the sleeves so we can attach you now here the cuffs so what we are going to be doing now is sewing both ends of the cuff so we're going to be putting them together and you're going to be sewing them close so it creates the cuffs right here so it's kind of like a circle so I'm going to be using the same yarn that I just fastened off here the cuffs if you don't have enough yarn then you can just use a little bit of the red yarn it's basically the same as we were sewing the squares So I'm just going to be placing a pin right here so I know that this is my reverse and this is the basically the right side of the cuffs because now we are going to be sewing into the sleeves right here. So we are going to be first turning the sleeves here inside out and you also want to make sure that the cuffs are on the reverse. As you can see this is my reverse, I just placed a pin right here and what we have to do now guys it's make this leaves right here to the size of the cuffs so it's a little bit easier for us to sew the sleeves with the cuffs together so what i came up with was basically running kind of like a sewing a very loose sewing going around here the sleeves and then i just pulled so it kind of creates a little ruche here on the bottom it can be not on the very end because that's where you're going to be sewing the cuffs on the sleeves you want to do kind of like on the second row and then you just want to go in a zigzag motion going all the way around i'm going to zoom in right here for you guys so you guys can see what i'm going to be doing so i'm gonna go right here into that row and then i'm just gonna go in a zigzag motion as you guys can see going through like the stitches and then just go through with my yarn and just leave like a little end so I can tie the ends together so you can go ahead and do this all the way around and then I'll show you guys how we are going to be attaching the cuffs right here you can see that when you pull the yarn it kind of creates a little it kind of gathers all the crochet together so that's what I want it to do for this part so what are you going to be doing is just pulling the yarn until you have the size of the cuffs you can pull everything like this and then you can just kind of like start opening and then it gets into the sizing of the cuffs as you guys can see and you also want to make sure that the cuffs are on the wrong side so the reverse and the sleeves are on the right side so the right side on the outside so now you're going to be inserting the cuffs right here on top and around the sleeves as you can see and you want to make sure that you go kind of like around it you can pin this if you guys want I would suggest you guys pinning this in place so it's not gonna be moving around as you can see so I have the sewing right here also the sewing of the cuffs aligned together that's very important because that is gonna keep all the sewing kind of like on the bottom of the sleeves and not on the kind of the top of the sleeves so I have here my yarn with my needle already threaded and we are going to be starting sewing all the way around right here so now we have to check how the cuffs look before we kind of finish the sewing uh, we can now remove this, the thread that is going around right here and just check, go around kind of checking if you got all of the sleeves once you're happy with the sewing of the cuffs you can fasten off and I'm going to basically just create a knot with these two right here just like that as you can see 
and then I'm just going to be cutting them off. So now you can just turn your sleeves on the right side with the cuffs and everything. I just like to move it around a little bit so we kind of like pull all the yarn out because sometimes they get a little bit kind of like stuck because we just created the sewing. So now you can go ahead and create the other sleeve. So how we are going to be doing now the part of the sewing, the front and the back together is basically having the square for the back laying flat on the table first. So I have it right here. You remember that I've pinned both sides together so nothing was going to be moving around because I have the sleeves exactly to fit the colors around here the armhole of the front and the back of the cardigan because I don't want any colors to kind of combine together so what we are going to be doing is have all of them flat like this and then we are going to be turning on the right side and now we have the shoulder and the top of the cardigan right here as you guys can see so we are going to be doing the sewing right here on top so you want to place the top of the cardigan on top of the back of the cardigan so you want to put both parts like this and we are going to be leaving these two at the back and these two without sewing so from here combining with the one at the back so from here all the way to the end right here we are going to create a sewing here both of the shoulders sewing as you can see I left it here open now we are going to be sewing the sleeves before we sew here the sides I'm just gonna be removing all the pins that I've added here on the sides not all just like the ones at the top so I'm going to be starting with my right sleeves so this is my right side. So what I have right here is I have my cardigan on the reverse. So the reverse right here is facing me and the right sides are on the inside right here. So this is the bottom of the cardigan and this is the sewing. So you want to have kind of in the same direction. And here is basically the top of the sleeves. So you want it to have aligned here with the shoulders. What you're going to be doing is aligning the shoulder with the shoulder, the top part here of the sleeves. Hopefully I'm making sense. And then you're going to be inserting it all the way through, just like this. So as you can see right here, we have the sleeves, which is kind of like sandwich with the front and the back here of the cardigan. So now we are just going to kind of like combine both of them and we are going to be sewing all the way around. Here you want to make sure that you don't pull too much. You just want to leave it kind of like as normally it would kind of sit when you hang it like this because you don't want it to pull or to be too tight. You just want to make sure that it's kind of like perfect, the fitting kind of around right here. So I'm just going to leave it like that and I'm going to be sewing now here. So I'm just going to be also removing this pin just under the armpit right here and I'm just going to be turning this so you guys can see how it looks so there we go as you can see it's sewed in place when you turn 
on the right side the sewing is a little bit nicer so what I'm going to be doing now guys it's repeat the same into the other side so I'm going to be doing this one now so as you can see guys I have one here <laughs> so my right side and my left side now here completed so what we have to do now guys is sew both of the sides close so i'm going to be removing all of my pins so i'm just going to basically just put it together and i'm going to be creating a straight sewing going kind of down on this side and then i'll also do the same on this side right here So I have finished sewing the sides as you guys can see and I have the cardigan on the right side. What I'm going to be doing now, it looks so pretty guys, oh my god I'm so excited, it looks so pretty, so soft. So what I'm going to be doing now is sewing the bottom right here and what you guys want to try to do is basically have this as flat as possible. So what I think is going to be the best when sewing this part is basically having here the reverse kind of on the outside as you can see so you can open the cardigan and then you can place the hemming right here and you can sew like that and you already sew it flat so you're not gonna kind of like have it kind of sticking out you know in kind of like a wrong way because you want it to be as flat as possible so I'm going to be sewing it like this. Good morning, guys. <laughs> so I have finished, as you guys can see, sewing the bottom of the cardigan as I showed you guys already how to make it and I have added one of the sides here for the front of the cardigan this blue um, piece right here so what I'm going to be doing now is show you guys how to make on the other side and then I'll sew exactly how I did um, all of the other pieces as well so very simple I didn't want it to create uh, the crochet straight on here because it would look a little bit weird so you could see kind of like the single crochets here on the very first row and that didn't look very neat so I just decided to sew this part here as well and it looks really pretty and I'm also going to be showing you guys how to make the color of the cardigan and I'm going to show you guys two options because I'm not sure how I'm going to be doing yet because I don't think I really like that flappy part because if we do that we're gonna have to close it a little bit more and make it a little bit more rounder so what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys how to make the original one and then I will try to do what I'm thinking of doing which is basically creating something very similar to this and then sew it kind of around just to have a little finish but I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing so I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this in a little swatch uh, but I'm going to tell you guys exactly how many chains I've done as well at the beginning. As always, we are going to be starting with a slip knot, and then from here we are going to be starting our chain. So you can go ahead and chain as many as you need. So I've chained, for this part right here, I did a chain of 70. So I'm just going to be doing a little swatch for you guys. And when you're creating this chain, what you want to make sure is that you create a chain and that you pull just a little bit to see if it reaches the sizing of the front here of the cardigan. So you want to create a chain that it's from the top of the cardigan all the way to the bottom right here. So a chain of 70 was enough for myself. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to be doing here this pattern that I've created. So once you have created your chain that is long enough to go from top to bottom of the cardigan at the front, we are going to now start to create the little pattern. So we are going to be doing first two rows with single crochets and then one with double crochet and then two more with 
single crochets so to start here my first row I'm going to be chaining an extra two so one and two and then into that third chain from the hook right here so one two three the one we were holding we are going to be creating our first single crochet so you go through the chain right here the next one you grab the yarn and then from here you're going to yarn over and pull through all the two loops so you're going to be creating that all the way down just like that and then you're going to chain one turn project so you are going to be skipping this first one into the second one we are going to be starting here with the single crochets so i'm going to be creating again another row of single crochets going down when you get here at the end you want to make sure that you get that very last stitch so it's this one here as you can see it's like a little bit angled so to create the rows here with the double crochets you're going to be chaining three turning project you're going to be skipping this first one into the second one you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook you're gonna go through the stitch you're gonna grab the yarn and keeping that on the hook so now we have here three loops on the hook so you're going to yarn over pull through two loops and then yarn over pull through the last two so that's how you create a double crochet and now we are going to be creating double crochets all the way down this row right here and make sure to get the very last one as well so now we are going to be doing two rows of single crochets just as the beginning so you're going to chain one turn project skipping one into the second one single crochet and then create all the way down the single crochets and then you're going to be repeating that one more row with single crochets so this is the pattern that I'm going to be doing for the front of the cardigan for that blue detail right at the front. So what I'm going to be doing now is creating this one that it's long enough to cover from top to bottom of the cardigan and then before I show you guys how to sew this in place I'm going to show you guys how to do the color of the cardigan because I'm already here so I'm going to be showing you guys that now. So the first option that I have in mind is creating something very similar to this. Uh, creating a chain that it's long enough to cover all the way around right here and then just creating kind of like single crochets going up or like double crochets or half double crochets this is something that you guys have to decide um, so that one is very simple and the other one is basically creating the original one but I'm going to be showing you guys as well if you guys want to do like the original one so this one right here is seven centimeters as you can see so what i'm going to be doing is doing double the size of this one to do the collar so you want to make sure that you do a chain that it's long enough to cover that centimeter so 14 centimeters so with the red yarn we are going to be creating a slip knot and then from here we are going to be starting our chain Always that you're measuring something, you want to make sure that you pull just a little bit just to see if it reaches the centimeters that you want. So, okay, I'm happy with that. So it reaches to 14, nearly 15. And I have right here a chain of 16 that it covers the 14 centimeters that we just measured. So we are going to be starting here with a chain of three first. So we can go up and into the fourth chain right here, we are going to be starting with our half double crochets so you can create half double crochets all the way down the chain so now to continue the rows here on top of the base we are going to be chaining two so we are going to be following the same steps as for the for the cuffs and also the bottom of the cardigan but instead of getting the back loop only we are gonna get the entire stitch so chain two turn project you're going to be skipping the first one into the second one right here into this little hole right here you're going to be creating the half double crochets so i think i made up my mind so i'm not gonna be doing this one the color this big because 
I don't think it looks really nice with this kind of cardigan. It does look on the on the original one, but I can see like on the pictures, it kind of looks very flappy at the back. You guys can see that it looks very like flappy. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, it looks kind of like weird at the back. So I, yeah, I made up my mind that I'm not gonna be doing this. I don't really like it. So I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm going to be doing. If you want, it's basically just following the same steps all the way until you cover the entire neck going around and then you're just going to be sewing that together you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of blue i can see that it's kind of attached like this so starting from like the middle of the blue going all the way around and sewing it together so i'm just gonna create a chain that it goes all the way around right here and then i'll let you know how many i did so i'm going to be doing here with my chain of 60 and what I'm going to be doing is basically exactly as I showed you guys before to do the, the collar. So we are going to chain three to start. And then from here, we are going to be starting our half double crochets. And I think I'm going to be doing two to three rows of um, half double crochets just so I have like a little finish. If I think that just one row it's enough, then I'm going to just keep the one row, but then I'll let you guys know. Because I just wanted to have like a little finishing, I didn't want it to be too much. I think it looks really pretty with the two rows, so I think I'm going to keep with the two rows, not with one. And what I'm going to be doing now, guys, is create the other blue part right here that I have to do. I'm going to be finishing this one and then I will show you guys a little time lapse of me attaching both together because it's basically the same as everything that I'm attaching right here and sewing and everything. So I'll see you guys in a second. <laughs> So what I'm thinking here in the kind of like in the corner, I was thinking of kind of like creating a little, let me see, just scrunching it up like this, maybe folding it on the inside, just so it kind of creates a little curve right here. Let me see. I want it to be more like a little curve here, so maybe we can sew it back on, grab a little stitch from here, and sew it back into the base. This is optional, you guys don't have to do this, this is just me. Yeah, maybe just like this. creating like a little you can see like taking that little point from here and kind of creating a little curve i think i'm happy with how this one looks i'm try to copy the same into the other side so now the last thing we have to do oh my god is the last thing i'm so excited to try it on i'm so excited to show you guys how it looks as well i'm going to see how many buttons i'm going to be using but what i was thinking is placing one right at the top one kind of like in the middle but i don't want it to do too much so i'm going to try and spread them out i'm basically just making 
making my cardigan more colorful <laughs> than it already is, but it's fine. That's part of it. So I'm going to be kind of mixing and matching the colors. I'm, I think I'm going to be starting here with orange. I don't want to also to match the colors here, so I'm going to try and just choose them carefully. I'm going to be doing this one first with orange, as I already told you guys. But it's very simple, guys. No secret of how to sew a button. So I'm just gonna go through a little stitch right here and pass my needle through the loop at the end just to fasten off the yarn. And then right here, I'm just going to be placing the button where I want and then just sew the, the button in place. I'm just gonna do just like this, take it back, and then I'm going to fasten off right here at the back. So now I'm just going to be sewing all my buttons in place and then I'll be back to show you guys how it looks like! Oh my god! So I'm basically going to be doing the outro with my little jumper on so you guys can see how it looks. So guys, I have the cardigan completed. Now I'm going to be trying it on and then let's see how it looks like and my thoughts and everything. So yeah, let's go! So I'm here ready to try on the cardigan for you guys. So let's get started because I'm so excited. Let's get started as if I'm not in the video already, right? So let's do it. Oh my God, I'm, I'm like even shaking. I'm so excited. You can see my smile, right? <laughs> okay. Oh my God, guys, look at this. I'm so excited. Oh my God, it fits. Perfect! Oh my god! Okay, everything is even and pretty. What do you guys think? I'm so excited. Comment below what you guys think. I think I do like it to be very tiny. The little detail right here rather than the, the bigger kind of color. But if, if you guys like that kind of style, then you can go ahead and do that. Because I don't think it's gonna look bad. I cannot wait to be like winter time so I can wear this outside. So yeah guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give a massive thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe here to the channel and let me know what you guys want me to do next. Comment below what you guys want to see more here in the channel. And yeah guys, thank you guys so so much for watching today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys on my next video. Bye bye!